Hi, everybody. So I am so excited today to talk to you guys about my very favorite goddess slash asteroid, Pallas Athena, the diamond mine. She is absolutely my favorite goddess because she is a badass. She really is. So I want to go through some of the aspects and the houses and uh, tell you more about this amazing goddess and how she works in our natal charts. So the symbols of Pallas are the snake and the owl. And in my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee, there is a huge huge statue of Pallas Athena with the snake. I'm wearing the snake for her in the Parthenon. And it is just absolutely beautiful. I think that's another reason that I am so enthralled with this goddess. But let me tell you more about her. So she is wise, wisdom, creative, innovative. Um, she is strategic. That's a big one. Also, with Pallas, we were able to see um, pattern. Also, um, Asperger syndrome and autism have been connected to Pallas. Higher patterns, like in astrology, tarot, gaming, quantum physics. She's all of these things. Now, on the negative side, though, with Pallas, if she's... Um, if there are negative aspects, especially, she can be ruthless, mentally ruthless, manipulative. Um, she can also always think she's right in a negative position, you know, about everything, not just some things, but everything. So those are some of the negative traits. Now, let me tell you more about her. It takes her four and a half years approximately to circle the zodiac and her orbit is um between mars and jupiter but it's really erratic but the mars jupiter thing i love because she is the warrior so the mythology is that athena and pallas were playing war games and zeus was watching so apparently Pallas was about to get the best of Athena and he distracted her. So while she was distracted, Athena killed Pallas, which she later felt so forlorn and so bad that she took up her cloak as a talisman and took on the name Pallas, thus Pallas Athena. So Pallas by transit and progression can mark times in our lives when we start um, big creative projects or when a big creative project ends or when we have sudden brainstorms of amazing creative or um, spurts of, of wisdom about our lives. So she can bring about those things in transit and also by progression, um, and she also shows up at those times when we feel like we're putting the pieces of the puzzle together, when we feel like we're seeing the big picture, when we're when we finally figure everything out. So I want to go through um, some of the aspects. So if Pallas is aspecting your son, you may have a greater understanding of how the ego works. You may have insight into the patterns of the ego, not just your own, but everyone's ego, how that works in their life. You may be able to have um, insight into other people's lives as well as your own. Um, there's not a lot of negative to say about the sun and, and palace together, except this could be one of those times that um, you might think you know it all a little. Now, if Pallas is aspecting the moon, the moon can be our body as well as our soul and emotions. You may gain um, real understanding and insight into the emotions of others. 
I would say that people that have palace aspect in the moon probably have a really high emotional IQ because they get it. They understand how someone else's emotions work. Now, at the same time, because the moon is our body, it's also about movement and how we um, how we present ourselves, our demeanor. I mean, Bruce Lee has palace in conjunct his in conjunction with his moon, and I believe that martial arts are also a part of palace gifts because. Well, who is better at martial arts than Bruce Lee? Okay, let's move on to Mercury. If you have Mercury and Pallas in aspect, you, <laughs> sometimes when I see this in a chart, especially if it's aspect in Uranus or um, Mercury and Pallas are in aspect in Aquarius, I automatically think genius, I really do. Because I think that when you have Mercury and Pallas aspect, aspecting each other, you have, you just strategically know things. You have this way of thinking that um, you just understand the way things work. You understand um, the bigger picture in life. And you're able to express it to others. Alice with Mercury just brings on this mental dexterity. It just brings on a way to put every piece of the puzzle together. You know, I, I know you've seen people that um, are really smart and they can look at a Rubik's Cube and it goes together. And that's kind of how I see Mercury with Pallas. You just have this ability to see things um, that other people can't see. You see the pattern. You see the way it works. You see um, the mathematical problem and how to solve it, and no one else can see it. Okay, if you have your palace and aspect to Venus, I love this one. This is a beautiful aspect to have. With Venus and palace, you have the ability to see patterns in relationships. Patterns in monetary systems. You have this ability to understand what's going on in relationships um, and would actually make a great counselor with this, um, with these aspects if they're in harmony, if like the trine or the sextile, or maybe even the conjunction. But financial planning would also be a good um, a good career choice for someone with Pallas and Venus together. But I think you can also see um, the patterns in beauty, you know, how different people um, or nature or whatever, whatever you find beautiful, you see a pattern in it, you see um, symmetry in it. And um, I think that's one of the nicest aspect, aspects to have with Pallas. But her real venue is probably Mars because Pallas is a warrior. This gives you strategy in war. This gives you strategy for the fight. It's your actions. You understand, you see the patterns, how things work when you go to battle. Now, this could be any battle. It doesn't have to be like a world war battle. It could be. Um, a battle for anything, but you can see how it works and know how to strategize if you have Mars in, in conjunction or trine or sextile to Pallas. Now, um, it could be if you had the opposition or the square, this could be a little bit more negative and um, I think manipulative a little. And um, maybe I kind of see this as you understand the patterns of battle, but you don't fight there, maybe. So with Jupiter and aspect to palace, you have an understanding and you're able to see the patterns of religion, of different cultures. You may have, um, you may be fluent or in foreign languages or just find them easy to pick up, easy to learn. Um, I, honestly, 
if you have this aspect, you would make a great travel planner because you can see the patterns and how things would go and um, the best places to go and the best ways to get there. Okay, so palace in aspect with Saturn. Okay, this is about seeing the patterns in structures. It's about understanding authority and how it works. I think this could even apply to architecture because if you go, um, if you think about Capricorn, which Saturn rules Capricorn, it's about building structures. So I think architecture would fit into that and being able to, to see the structures in the world, the structures around you or how authority works you know, how authority works in our government. I think it could give you a really good understanding of, of politics, actually. Okay, palace in aspect with, what's next? Uranus, <laughs> my favorite. Okay, so palace in aspect with Uranus, could you are able to see the patterns in astrology, technology, um, more than other people it's like your brain is geared like you can read a computer program when other people just think it's gibberish you're able to come up with you're able to see the patterns and come up with things that other people just don't see i really think that um that when you have palace and aspect with uranus it, it really can be a genius aspect. I mean, because I think you're almost ahead of your time in being able to see the big picture, especially of technology, the internet, um, and even astrology. So when you have palace and aspect with Neptune, you know, when I think of this aspect, I think of someone who's a great actress or actor because you're able to see the bigger pattern when um with imagination concern you're able to use your imagination in a constructive creative way um, that convinces other people that you're someone who you're not if you're an actor i also think if you have palace and a positive aspect to neptune you're able to see through the fog you know, Neptune can cause us to put on our rose-colored glasses and we sometimes don't see things clearly or um, there's deception involved. But with palace there, it gives you the ability to sort through all of that fog and see clearly um, things that other people just can't see. You're able to um, clearly see into human nature, I think, with Neptune and Pallas. And last but not least, we have Pluto in aspect with Pallas. With Pluto in aspect with Pallas, you can see the dark side of humanity. You can see the patterns of what's going on in the darkest of places. It gives you the ability to understand the occult it gives you the ability to understand death and actually have insight into that to see the bigger picture um you're able to have an understanding of the psyche and the, and the consciousness that excuse the unconscious not the conscious that maybe other people don't have I also think, though, if Pluto is in a negative or non-harmonious aspect to palace, that's when there can be ruthlessness um, and manipulation. So let's go through the houses. Where do we have palace in our chart? Let's kind of see how it might work. So let's, of course, start with the first house. If you have palace in the first house, especially close to your ascendant, you are able to use your body and personality to make things happen for you. You're able to um, see the patterns in other people so you can make what you have work for you. I think having um, palace close to the ascendant is um, 
a very creative place. It's a strategic place. You know how to use yourself to make that work for you. Uh, well, let's, for instance, Britney Spears has palace on her ascendant. She was able to use her body and talents to work for her, to bring her to a place of fame. Now let's look at it another way. Charles Manson also has palace on his ascendant and he was able to use his personality to um, manipulate and cause pain in others. Um, he was a master manipulator, though. People believed him. They believed what he said. His personality was kind of larger than life. And I think that palace on the ascendant um, enhanced that. So I think the second house would be a really cool place to have palace because you would be able to see the patterns in economics, see the patterns in beauty. You know, even see the patterns in cooking. I think that the great chefs of the world are able to, to strategize and use this creative process to um, create things that other people can't. You know, um, the creation of new hairstyles by a hairdresser. And for sure, the economic side of things. I mean, if you have palace in the second, you may have the ability to see the patterns in the stock market and know where it's going next and know how to capitalize on that and make money. Now, a few people that have um, palace in the second house, we have Snoop Dogg. I love it. I mean, he was able to see... Um, the way hooking up with Martha Stewart would be good for him. I mean, right? And make money from that. We have Ariana Grande and Alicia Keys. And I think all three of those are great examples of a second house palace. All right, let's move on to house number three. You know, I think having palace in the third house gives you the uncanny ability to communicate and understand speech patterns, or to look at um, sentences or poetry and be able just to put it together, to see that big picture. Um, the third house of palace, I think is um, probably one of the ones that if it's well aspected, when I see that, I think, wow, this person has some genius in their personality because that ability to see communication patterns is amazing. And Palace in the third, because I think, because that makes me think of Mercury, really. Um, I think it gives you just this ability to be creative in your own speech and to make things happen. Publis you know, maybe publish something if you have Palace in this house publish a book, publish poetry, publish a song, because you have the ability to see into those words and make things happen. So here's some people that you may know with Palace in the third. We have Princess Diana. Now, don't you think that her ability to communicate with others was what made her so beloved by the world? I do. I think it was her ability to um, speak to the, the very poorest and most needy and then also stand up to the queen. And so she was able to do all of that. Jennifer Lopez also has her um, palace in the third house. And, you know, Jennifer Lopez has been able to put um, her lyrics and her songs um, in a mean, meaningful way and um, has become famous through doing that. And her acting ability isn't bad either. Now, if you have Palace in the fourth house, when I think about this one, I think about someone that's really into um, their heritage or genealogy um, that understands ancestry because you can see the patterns. 
in your ancestors. And you know, the fourth house is all about our ancestors, but also since it's about our home in real estate, I mean, you could see how to put a room together, all the little details. You know, a palace helps you see the pattern going through the house and how it might um, look better this way or look better that way. Also, see the patterns in the real estate market. When's the best time to buy? When's the best time to sell? I think the fourth house would be a really cool place to have palace. And especially because of the understanding of ancestry. I mean, I think it takes um, a brilliant mind, wisdom, to be able to go back through all of those um, eras and years and pick up on the ancestry for yourself or for other people. So um, some people that you may know that have palace in the fourth, Taylor Swift. Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber. Now, you know, I'm not going to try to connect those directly to the fourth house palace, but I think this is the thing. You know, they're famous, but there's they have a personal life too. So they may really know a lot about decorating real estate or ancestry, and we just don't know it, right? Okay, let's go to house number five. So palace in the fifth, here comes the big creativity. Here comes sports, being able to see the pattern in sports. People with palace in the fifth, they're, they're able to strategize. I mean, think boxing, um, tennis, base, any sport would apply to this. Also, um, the creativity painting. The arts, um, all of that goes with the fifth house. And Palace is so good there because she can see those patterns, see how to make that painting better, see into the deep places of art and um, see how to win those games. So, okay, some famous people. You know what? I was just thinking about this. So, um. This is a this is kind of crazy, but if you had Palace in the fifth, the fifth um, house governs gam gambling. So maybe going to the casino and seeing the patterns in um, in the card games, in blackjack, or seeing the patterns on the slot machines. You know, if I had Palace in the fifth house and I don't, I think I would give that one some thought. <laughs> Okay, so famous people, Picasso, Jackie Kennedy. Now, I think that Jackie Kennedy's ability to make everyone feel at home and feel, it, it was a hospitality that comes with the fifth house and able to see, I mean, see the patterns in a seating arrangement for dinner. What would work best? Who would communicate best with who? That kind of thing. And also one of my very favorite guitarists in the whole world, Jimmy Page, seeing the patterns in the music. All right, let's move on to the sixth house. I think a sixth house palace is kind of lucky because they're able to see the patterns and have understanding of health and diet and exercise. These are probably the people that can come up with an exercise plan or a diet plan because they can see the pattern. They can see that big picture and see how it all works. Also, they're just able to see into the daily routine. And um, I think these are probably the people that can strategize and have their day planned. And they're not time wasters because they understand just how the day-to-day -day works. So, some people that have a sixth house palace, Mark Zuckerberg, Sigmund Freud, and Bill Gates. Pretty interesting, huh? Okay, let's move on to the seventh house because the seventh house is all about other people. So what if you could see the patterns of 
everyone else? What if you could see the patterns in relationships? What if you could see the patterns in your open enemies and know how to strategize against them or have a strategy to befriend them? So people that have a seventh house palace, I think they're able to have an understanding of other people that is really special in counseling may be a good idea or um, a wedding planner because, you know, it's about committed relationships. Also the justice system, you know, the judge that can sit and see the bigger pattern or understand what's really going on underneath, see the bigger picture to bring justice to a situation. So some of our seventh house palace people, we have Jada Pinkett Smith, and I just love her, Carl Young. Boy, he was able to understand other people, right? I think um, that was one of his biggest accomplishments is, or the biggest accomplishment, understanding other people and how they work and what their patterns are. Okay, let's move on to the eighth house. You know, the eighth house covers so many things. Um, I know that we think of the eighth house as a dark house sometimes, but what about seeing the big picture when it comes to death or having that understanding, seeing the pattern? You know, someone, think about it. If you were a mortician, making someone look beautiful after they passed away, understanding the occult and how the soul works, also understanding taxes, understanding debt. I think that's a big one. Um, someone with palace in the eighth house would make a great um, financial planner or um, debt specialist because they understand the pattern. What are your patterns when it comes to debt? I recently had a conversation with a beautiful friend of mine that has a great understanding of how debt works. And I wondered if her palace was in the eighth house because that's a great place for just seeing that big picture. And you need to understand that when it comes to those things, um, when it comes to debt and taxes, because there were so many little details. So being able to pick it apart and see the big picture is so important. So some of our eighth house palace, Oprah Winfrey, Prince, and Kurt Cobain. All right, let's move on to the ninth house. Palace in the ninth, you would see the patterns in foreign matters, um, foreign languages, have a good understanding of other countries and of belief systems, how the belief systems in foreign countries work or how your own belief systems work. Why do you believe what you believe? You can see the bigger picture. You can put that pattern together. You know, I think that's probably, I guess for me, um, because I've never, I did study French in high school, but okay. I never really learned to fluently speak another language. I think it's rather difficult. I think palace in the night gives people that dexterity, that, um, that impetus to do that and be able to do it with ease. <laughs> I'm not one of those. But when you have palace in the night, you're able to see the religious systems too. But you're able to have a greater understanding of faith, beliefs, religion. So I've got two really different famous people that have an eighth house palace and both of them make sense to me. So first I have Angelina Jolie who adopted um, all of these kids from other countries. She's an advocate for children in other countries. She's an ambassador for children in other countries because she can see the big picture. She has an understanding. Now, 
The other person is Adolf Hitler. He also understood belief systems. He also understood other countries. He had the ability to have people follow him in his belief systems. Now, was this a good thing? Of course not. But it's also an example of palace in the ninth house. All right, let's move on to the top of the chart, the 10th house. Ability to see the patterns in fame, in fortune, in this understanding of your own place in the world. All of this is about that 10th house. The, the ability to see the pattern in your own career or the career of others or where you're going. The ability to see maybe a child and what they're going to be like when they get older. Understanding the patterns that go with different people and where what their place in the world might be one day. Um, understanding authority. You know, Understanding politics, having that, having that ability to see the bigger picture, the patterns in uh, politics in all countries, understanding governments, justice. All of this goes with that 10th house. And I have some good examples for you. We have Martin Luther King and JFK. I don't think I need to say anything about those. And also one of my favorites, I have Eminem. And you know what? I think he was able to see himself as a rapper. You know, if you know anything about Eminem, and I'm not going to go into all of it, but um, he was able to see fame and fortune for himself and he got there. Okay, let's go to the 11th house. I think the 11th house is a lot about seeing the bigger patterns in friendships, relationships, organizations, seeing how they work, how they fit together. I like the 11th house. It gives you um, insight into cults, into any um, organized activity, into friendships. You know, seeing the bigger picture. Is this a part-time friend, a full-time friend, or is this a friend that's pretending to be a friend? <laughs> Having an understanding of those things is all part of the 11th house. And also knowing the bigger picture for yourself, for your own wishes, for your dreams, for being able to put the pieces of the puzzle together in order to get there. Wouldn't that be cool? I kind of think Palace and the 11th would be a really nice place to have it. And here's some people that do. Bruce Lee, who I mentioned earlier, has Palace conjunct the moon in the 11th. Also, Gordon Ramsay has it in the 11th. Boy, I think he's pretty, um, has a pretty good understanding of organizations, don't you? Um, his All his restaurant groups, um, you know, that's an organization, right? And um, also one of my favorites, I have a huge crush on Lenny Kravitz and he's also in 11th house palace. You know, I think having palace in the 12th house is pretty special. You know, all the palace places are special. There's something really cool about each and every house, but having palace in the 12th house, I think would give you an ability to see the bigger patterns of the collective. It's like we've entered the age of Aquarius. Someone that has a 12th house palace or could have seen this and could have seen the results of it way before the age of Aquarius ever came. I mean, it's the ability to see into the spiritual realm, to understand the people, Understand the people, understand the collective, um, to see the patterns. How are things going in the world, in everybody? I also think this could be somewhat of a burden, being able to have that understanding. Um, maybe even a little bit depressing because you can see where things are going. And sometimes that's not good. 
or you can see where things are going. And sometimes it's amazing. So um, Nelson Mandela has a 12th house palace and Madonna. <laughs> but Madonna, Madonna and she has a, a real spiritual life. She studies Kabbalah. Um, I think that she's deep. She's dived deeper into the spiritual realm that than most of us think she has, or you know, maybe than I thought she did. But I think Madonna is actually a very spiritual person. Okay, so that wraps up the twelve house. You know, you can get an asteroid report from Meredith. Um, at soulnavigation.com. If you'd like to know more about your own palace, you can book a reading with me or one of the other astrologers. Just look in the notes below. Um, you know, I looked up the palace and some of my favorite astrologers, uh, Meredith Bonke, Liz Green, Don Bogwogi, um, Dane Rudyard. I looked them all up. You know, they all had palace in different houses. That just tells me that wherever palace is, it can bring strategy, understanding, creativity, all of those great things if we just learn to work with her a little bit. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time.